I'm sorry I'm going to have to sit down, but my knees are aging after, a bit faster than me, I think, and they don't like standing. The Pathfinder started in North New Zealand in 1956. Uh, I'm not quite sure what, when they started here, but um, Bronte Sinclair was the youth leader at that time. He came up to Wongarei to start our to start Pathfinders. We had a meeting out in the hall, and at nine o'clock we broke off our meeting and went out to watch the first satellite go over. Does anybody remember what year that was? It was a good, good many years ago, but that was the year that the Pathfinder started. Viv Larson, some of you people will know the names that I've mentioned that's been in Pathfinders, others may not. But Viv Larson was our first Pathfinder director, and I was put in as his assistant. Uh, the children, was, would, uh, and when they came, were learning uh, friends, companion and guide work and we were supposed to be master guides. But because we were so new, we had to study, I think, harder than the children. They seemed to do it easier than us, to keep one jump ahead of them so we knew just what to give them each week for the meetings. The uh, meetings used to meet every Sunday morning in the hall. It was the old hall then, the little one. Um, uh, we had a parade and inspection. They didn't have uniforms to start off with, but over the year the, they got their uniforms. They all had to be inspected. There was a little bit of a dispute. Some of the girls liked to wear their blouses out. Others liked to wear them in. But the rule said blouses in. So I, we had our own rule. They had their blouses tucked in for inspection, parade, and the devotional service. Then when we broke to do our other classwork, they could have their shirts in or out, whichever they liked. And that worked very well. We had no problem getting the girls to tuck their shirts in for, for the... Um, and I found all the time working with children, sometimes you had to make compromises to keep the peace. Some of the children would start getting into mischief and you had to pounce on them fairly quickly, otherwise it got out of control. Uh, I think there's three, three boys here that used to be pathfinders. Shane. Trevor and David. Are there any others here that used to be? Can't see who you are. Oh, I couldn't, can't see you properly. My eyes are not very good. Yeah, uh, you, were, you were the leader a part of the time. <laughs> yeah, that, that was much later. That was about the time I left. Um, we had games, crafts, uh, knot tying, and believe me, we used to get into some really good knots. Uh, the vocational honours, that that's these that are on my sash, they have the vocational honours. And I have a paper uh, here that lists uh, a lot of the vocational honours that the children do. It shows all the, uh, the badges. Where are we? It shows the badges and then gives you an outline of the work that you do. I also have one here on camp cooking and fire, bu fire building and camp cooking. One of the competitions the children had to do was light a fire with one match. That was all right on a calm day, but on a windy day, that could be very, very difficult. And some children were much better at doing that than others, so that when we went down each year to our meeting down in Haskell Park, when we all competed against the different, uh, different clubs, um, we always picked out those who could do the thing. We got a list ahead of the time, and some that were good on the work practiced up, and they loved the camp cooking, making pancakes over the fire. Sometimes they got burnt, but they seemed to enjoy them. At home, if they got burnt, they wouldn't eat them, but when they burnt them themselves, they seemed to think that was all right. We used to have a monthly, meet, monthly outing. We'd climb Parahaki. Uh, I was usually fairly well behind, but never mind, we got there. Uh, I remember one time we went over to uh, Matakoi Museum. I remember Merv Melville was one of our dads that help with the transport. And I found all during my Pathfinder years, the parents were very good in supplying support and transport for the various outings. Um, year we, that was the early meeting at Haskell Park. And I remember one year we went down there and they were doing the drill. Um, Diane Lynch was my leader on one end of the line and um, Greenfield, Michael Greenfield was the 
other end of the line, so when they turned, I had a senior one each end. Pastor Possington was giving the orders, and my team was in a single file marching across the grounds, and somebody distracted past the pastor, and the team just marched straight off the ground. Everybody was doing and owing, wondering what was happened. But he announced afterwards that that was the right thing to do because no other order had been given, so she just kept marching straight ahead. Mostly at these, uh, there was a few upsets like that. Uh, I'll just mention three camps that we had. Uh, one was down at Ria Tahi at an old house down there. At this time, uh, Ray Blackburn was the leader. I was the assistant cook. And uh, he took the children up, climbed up Mount Manaya. My heart was in my mouth all day, wondering where the hell they were getting on. But they all arrived back, very grubby, dirty, scratched, and you know how, what happens when a group of boys go out like that. But it was a very good camp. Another camp we had was out at Greenfields at Potu, and that was an old, home, old homestead out there. Mrs Ringrose was with me at that stage, and Griffin Yvonne Ellis were my helpers. I got out there early. The house had had hay uh, stored in it, uh, but that, it was still quite clean, but I left all the hay there for them to play with. And um, our, um, I lit the fire, it was a big old wood stove, that, and I nearly got smoked out of the house. Went outside to have a look to see if the smoke was coming out the chimney, and what came out the chimney was a possum. He had built a home in the, ne in the chimney, so Griff had to climb up on the roof and dispossess the possum of his home. After that, we had a good fire and had a good camp. At that meeting, while Grace was being set at breakfast, I kept my eyes open and I saw somebody sprinkle salt on somebody else's porridge. So I just walked over and picked up the two plates and changed them over. <laughs> I was reminded about that about 20 years later, the person concerned. Some might know who it is, who it was. He was a bit of a scoundrel, but he was a lovely boy. Um, what else? It wasn't Dave. No, the one, neither of the two are here at the present time. Um, uh, where did we get to? I said, oh, the other, other camp meeting was out at Lewis Ringroses, uh, our uh, weekend camp. He put up a big tent out there and uh, put hay bales in for us to sit on. Ronald McLeod was the Pathfinder director then. And he went out in the bush and came back we went for a bushwalk, and when we came back, he came back with a kiwi and a kiwi egg. And got all the children in the tent, and they all had a look at the kiwi and the egg. And then I had to keep all the children in the tent while the kiwi was returned to its natural habitat. And at, during the camp out there in the tents, the other two were in houses, these was in tents, and little voices would say, Mrs. Codling, there's something making a noise outside my tent. It was Lewis's cows that were across the creek, and you could hear them chewing grass and mooing and moving around. And, and then somebody else would say, what's that noise? And it would be a kiwi's calling or a warpork calling. And it was quite interesting that the children from the town had never heard that sort of thing. But it's surprising how quickly they adapted. Uh, the other thing, uh, well, we used to have a Pathfinder meeting at the church. The Pathfinders would all parade in and be presented with their... Uh, awards for the year. I still have my little book for my master guide directions and I'll tell you about three, <coughs> three big camps we went to. One in World's End at 1971. That was, that's the two booklets from there and that's the little banner we got. Mrs Ringrose was there. Uh, I took a group of children down on the train. We went to walk them by car. I think Sue was with us that, on that uh, trip. We uh, took the train down to Wellington, and uh, Sue McLeod, uh, she wasn't Sue McLeod then, she escorted us from the train to the boat because she knew Wellington and all the side tracks and get through. And over on the boat, we got to the other end, and the buses were to meet us, but our bus didn't turn up. Uh, because he had driven over the road, which was newly formed, 
and he didn't like taking his bus over that road again. I don't blame him because in the bus you look out like that and you look straight away down to the bottom of the cliff. And so we had to wait for that. But when we got to the camp, it was a lovely campground. Pastor Possington was there. I remember they had him in the trailer with any sleeping bag and took him down and dumped him in the creek. I don't remember what he did. He never worried, he never fought or anything. He just accepted it. He'd evidently played pranks on the others and they got one back on him. Pastor Possington, I don't know how many of you know him. He's a lo really lovely man. <coughs> um... Uh, the other camp I went to was at Yarra Mundi in Australia. I didn't take any of the children to this camp. I went as an assistant to a composite group of ch children that didn't have Pathfinder camps to go to. And the worst thing when we got there and camp, uh, pitched our camps was no fires to be lit at all. All our food had to be eaten cold. It was so hot. Uh, during our camp, we had a violent storm, and a big, uh, each camp was in a different block and a space between. And a tree fell, and it fell in that space between the tents. And, uh, the, and the flood, I, could, uh, I, I was in my tent, and I could see the water trickling down past it and so forth. So we were all confined to our tents for a few hours while the rain passed over. But everybody was joyful after that because they could light fires. And that was a very happy time. Um, uh, do any of you remember Carter Rangosa's book, No Devil Strings? Yeah, well, Pastor Rangosa was at that camp in a group, and we had him to our camp for a meal, which was very interesting. He told some very interesting stories. Then Tui Ridge was the big camp, and this is the banner we got from Tui Ridge. Um, Ivy was at that one. I think Mrs. Cosmeyer was the director at that time, if I remember right. I may not have it, all these details exactly right because after all these years it's very hard to remember it all. Um, we had subcamps of Nazareth, um, Jerusalem, I can't read my own writing. Bethany, Caney, Capernaum, and Jericho. Uh, and the hill between the kitchen and the present big building there was Golgotha, and they had the three crosses up on that, which was very remembered. Uh, so that was very interesting. I've also got the, um, that's the badges. You're supposed to wear some of these on your, uh, on your sash, but there's no room on my sash. I also have a little um, book booklet here that we were given. And each uh, day there were some of the people dressed as disciples and you had to go around and ask them and they would put a stamp on your book to get the stamp. And we had to keep a four-day diary, which I have there. And uh, it was one of the most interesting camps. There were so many children there. The... Um, what have I got here? Oh, that's the application. It's got a map here of the layout of the camp. Any of them wants to look at these books afterwards, they can have a look at them. And uh, they had various activities on that you could go to. And uh, I remember one they had the, a fighting, fighting up on the hill, throwing bags of flour or something at each other. <laughs> they had, uh, there was a lake near the camp. It was not on the campground, but the farmer allowed the use of it. And they had boats out on the lake, and they had, I think they had a few water fights down there too. But working with pathfinders and a group of children, I found very interesting. Uh, it wasn't only our church children. A lot of them brought their friends with them who were very, felt very out of place, I think, when they were, came first. But it was surprising to see how they, over the weeks, they all joined in. Each year there seemed to be one boy who was a little bit of a, I don't know what you'd call him, a mischief or high-spirited or something. And you sort of had to keep your eye on that particular one most of the time and nip any little problems that came up in the bud. Otherwise it spread and the whole thing got out of hand. But I found that by talking to the children, <coughs> compromising, making rules and sticking to them, I found it very interesting and even today, 
<coughs> well, last year at the camp, big camp, there were several young people who came up to me, young married people mainly. You don't know me, Mrs. Codling? No, I don't know you. Oh, I was in Pathfinders or I was at the Pathfinder Camporee or something like that. And they still remember the work that we used to do in the Pathfinders. I think that's about all I can tell you about it. I, after the um, big camp at Tui Ridge, I uh, seemed to drift out of Pathfinders. Uh, it got a little bit too much for me. <laughs> I think that's about all I can tell you. I hope you've enjoyed what I've been able to tell you. Have anybody got any questions? I, did, I should have mentioned I had 28 children when I went down to the camp at uh, South Island on the train. That was a great experience.